Now, here is where Alex and I kind of overlap. So, I'm not going to steal the entire thing, but we've been talking about gondolas. We're going to get to that. But there is a rumor floating around. There's going to be... They're going to expand uh, the monorail. That's and not says, true. And I, I've seen it on multiple sites. And I'm, I'm just multiple people. I, I trust many individuals, and they have all said that is not happening. It's gondolas. I it's, and there, it's and not most all of the people gondolas. that I've seen. It's gondolas. It's not all gondolas. I've heard it's all gondolas. It's gondolas, and it's, it's being made by the crew. Okay, so let me begin where I was. Yeah, you uh, you do your gondolas, and then I'll read the rest of what I've have down. And then we'll talk. Uh, this originally started as a rumor on WW Magic, and this was by an individual that's very good at finding patents. And I think even last month, uh, this started coming, but no one knew exactly what this would mean, and that they were going to construct new buildings at various points of the resort property. Would be until now. Uh, it seems very much from multiple high reliable rumors they're doing is that they're going to be doing a four transportation that will connect Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Caribbean Resort, and Disney's Art of Animation. This would be a gondola system from the same team that has created the ride system of Hogwarts Express from Universal Orlando Resort. Now, this is something that's been very much reliable ever since it first came out or that this is something that's now rumor and it's going to happen after hearing all that i really don't think it's most of it's going to be i think most of it's going to be gondolas and maybe some uh buses there's been no talks about any form of out of discussion i don't think it's out of discussion because i believe that because people have been really angry with the disney bus system lately i believe that they're going to get rid of the entire bus system no but they are going to limit it that's what they're going to be doing they are going to limit the system because they can't get to every single resort can i not for now can i not be interrupted real quick all right, fine. Thank you. They have an issue at Disney where you have to go to the transportation ticket center basically to get anywhere. Because every time okay. that I go to Disney, Disney World, I have to go on a bus or a monorail to the transportation <laughs> ticket center, and then that will take me basically anywhere except Disney Springs, which is hysterical. I have to go to a resort to go to Disney Springs. I believe that they will start, they will put uh So the viral isn't what you, like, what you've heard, but by... No. I, I believe that they will continue <laughs> what they want to do with this monorail expansion, as they're calling it, and make the Epcot line go through Swan and Dolphin. And go over studios and um, make an entire new uh, beam that would link Animal Kingdom, Blizzard Beach, and Typhoon Lagoon and uh, Disney Springs. You realize how expensive it's going to be. Is. It's going to be about $650 million. Where have you heard that from? Uh, I would like to not say that. But they've been saying gondolas are happening too. Here's this is basically what's been said. The right the system itself would be a doppelmayer. Uh, no one's exactly sure what type of doppelmayer gondola it would be, but they are able to handle high capacity. And what the plan is is that they're going to be connecting it from Epcot. Caribbean, art, and Hollywood. We've and established main, that. 
Yes, and their main ambition is to add that source of transportation and to start limiting buses for those resorts. But if you if you look, and I'm gonna get off this because, website now. If you look at the Disney World say, map, let me say how it would work. Because the Myra system that's already in place at Epcot, they would have the ability to allow people out of Epcot, and there would probably be a path to be created. That would lead them directly to the gondolas. Now it'd be a long path, but it would have to happen. And they've done long paths before when it comes to resort property. And Magic Kingdom and multiple others have had long paths to get to places. Okay, and so I'm looking at the map right now, the Disney map. And there's a way. There's a very easy way to do this. So you have Magic Kingdom, that monorail goes all the way down, and it hits Epcot. Then you take the Epcot monorail, or you don't make another monorail for that, and you just do the gondola from board or from yeah, from boardwalk to Caribbean Beach to Art of Animation, Hollywood Studios, all that stuff, right? And you have the thing the also the boat that goes from Hollywood Studios to Epcot. They don't you make have a boat. Well then make a boat. Do a universal. Because all of that connects to each other. Here's where the problem lies. The Epcot track goes just as far as future world goes. I'm not I'm not talking I'm not talking about connecting monorail beams. I'm not. I'm talking if you're wanting to go from Magic Kingdom to Animal Kingdom, you will take a monorail beam to Epcot. Then you will take a gondola to Hollywood Studios or take a boat from Epcot to Hollywood Studios and then take another monorail from Hollywood Studios to Blizzard Beach because all of the parks uh with the exception of Hollywood Studios, which they can route it a way around, all of their parking structures hit to where they are like, you're good. They don't even have parking structures. Not parking structures, parks. parking lots. I meant Animal Kingdoms and Blizzard Beaches lines up. You technically have the lineup of Hollywood Studios's, but it's on the side, so it would be weird. And then you curve it around Caribbean Beach, probably under the gondola system or something like that. You go to Typhoon Lagoon, hit Disney Springs, uh, and then circle back around. Or not even circle back around, just do what the Metro does in D.C. and literally have one train that goes back and forth all day. Because that, look at saves, that, I... saves, that saves money on how much monorail you have and it also makes it to where you have less buses. Yes, you can still have bus system, but you can have literally you can get rid of the, and I hate saying this, you can get rid of the bus stuff at the ticket and transportation center because that place is a freaking whacked out. It's already a cluster. It's a cluster. It's and all... I hate, I hate going to TT, TTC every single time I go. It's so make, all... Make two of them, make Disney Springs a TTC, and then make TTC, of course, a TTC. And have the Disney Springs buses and all the TTC buses go to all four parks and then have one bus that goes to each resort. Not 14 buses that go to Pop Century. BSC, here's the thing, Travis. I agree with you because here's the thing. I went to Magic Kingdom uh, for my 18th birthday trip. And it's already a cluster because I believe it's I believe it's the right place I'm talking about. If you get off the tram or the bus, there is already that like a little uh, ticket thing or a store or whatever it is that's connected to the ticket place. Yes, and it is already a cluster with the people getting off the tram and the bus. And I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but. They need to if actually they wait. There is bus. Yeah, what? Travis, there is a bus system that takes from Hollywood Studios to Epcot. But Thank you. and I will say this as a big but, 
the Myrail tracks you were talking about. Yes. Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. And... Uh, Blizzard Beach, I believe, which is yeah, no, it's Animal Kingdom. Uh, Blizz, yeah, Blizzard Beach, Hollywood Studios, not Holly, yeah, Hollywood Studios, Typhoon Lagoon, Disney Springs. Here's the reason why I've heard from individuals that Myra system is not going to happen, and I'm maybe wrong. Who knows? They don't have the proper system for it anymore. That's why you make a new one. <laughs> exactly. Make it more and modern. Every that single track. Sense. That'd be a billion dollar project. I'm not saying replace every track. You're good with your monorail track already from Epcot to Hollywood front. But to you said Magic replace Show. it. I'm you not saying replace, replace that track. Even though, yes, it does break down a lot. I'm not saying replace the original track. I'm saying make a monorail 2.0 which is how they're making basically everything a 2.0 in this world make like how they're making yeah. hollywood studios 2.0 how soon they're going to be making epcot 2.0 or with everyone calling it soren 2.0 even though soren 2.0 which sucks. that does not make sense soren 2 sucks Sorin. yeah um but if you make a monorail right type now, system or here's the thing partner with uh the city of orlando who have a monorail service that goes through what? their airports make something like that that goes from animal kingdom to disney springs that once again and i will say this you're talking about billion dollar investment i i understand that what they need you realize how much that stretched their but budgets. they don't they don't need gondolas and they already that connect have their budget the stretched parts that enough. nobody goes to um they have their budget stretched enough avatar is not going to make its profits it's not you're basing it off a dated ip that's very much not going to work and star wars how exactly is that new how yeah but how is that a new ip for walt disney world that's yeah, but, been there ever since Disney's Hollywood Studios is open. They're not going to make as so much of an investment. Alex, they aren't. Alex, pause, pause, pause. Was, you said you said Star Wars is 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 dead. No, it's not. They're making like fifteen. No, I movies, didn't say it was okay? dead. I didn't say it was dead. Travis, I didn't say it was dead. You didn't let them finish. It's not dead, but it's not going to make as much the return investment as people are thinking. Uh, you're thinking. That it's a brand new IP, but it's not. It's been there for over 20 plus years. Yes, and they're getting rid of the attraction that was there for 20 plus years and putting new innovative stuff in there and putting it in a complete new part of the universe that no one's ever seen. It's a brand new planet. But here's the thing. The reason why How Avatar, long? the reason why Avatar is going to succeed is because they're making new movies. They're making Avatar 2, 3, and I'm pretty sure 4. 2 is coming out, I'm pretty sure what this year. Crap. Wait, wait, they're making two That's more Avatars? They're making more Avatars, yes. Oh, wow, I didn't three. know that. And here's where I'm trying to say this. Avatar could very go in the way of Alice. It was a spectacle film, but you take away everything else. It's not exactly a good movie to begin with. It's not... So what if the film boss? What if the return of investment is not good for the parks? Oh my goodness. Are you are you talking about a James Cameron moving bombing? Nice try. That's never gonna happen. Do we need to go back to how much Avatar made in box office? And here's the thing. That was a spectacle film. No, it was Only not. Can, it is. Because it, it made two point seven eight eight billion dollars in US. And why? Because they redefined 3D in film. They did. And no one can disagree with that. It changed the way everyone thought of 3D and how it could be handled. So you're telling me that Spy Kids 3D revolutionized 3D? No. I'm. You're turning on something else. Travis, the fact that Alice in Wonderland was a similar thing. It I didn't was say I'm Alice in Wonderland. I said Spy Kids. But let me just say this. Alice in Wonderland was a spectacle. It was a film that was marketed with the 3D in mind. 
And regardless of how you interpret the film, good or bad, it made profit because they marketed as that a spectacle. Okay. And what did they do? As it was back then, and everyone wouldn't fall to the trick. And so you say without, that you say that spectacles are okay. So you, hear me out on this. Avatar is the number one grossing movie ever from Box Office Mojo with two billion seven hundred and eighty-eight million dollars. And was there any Halloween costumes two years after? No, because why was would you want to be? Why after? would you? Why would you want to dress up like a seventeen-foot-tall blue person? That makes and no sense. And that's my Ti point. Titanic, Titanic, another James Cameron movie, made two billion dollars. Star Wars: The Force Awakens made two billion dollars. Jurassic World made one billion. Marvel's The Avengers made one billion. Furious Seven made a billion. Avengers: Age of Ultron made a billion. Here's the Harry thing, Potter though. made a billion. A billion. Frozen Travis. made a billion. I'm I'm making this point. You're saying that spectacles don't make money. If you look at Here's Frozen, if you look at Frozen, I've never seen that ride down below thirty minutes ever in its entirety of being there in a year. If you look at Harry Potter, I've never really seen it except on really like dead days at the park, anything below 45, because I have the Universal app and I have the Disney app. And here's the thing. It's spectacles people see come. it on the screen and they want to see it in person. That's why and Star Wars Land is going to do good. That's why Toy Story Land is going to do good. Mm -hmm. And that's... And that's why Avatar is going to do good. Which some like of the people continue? I've talked to. Let Will say something first. Which some of the people I've talked to are not excited about Toy Story World. And honestly, me growing up watching the Toy Story movies and being a fan of them, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to ride the um, Slinky Dog roller coaster is what they're having. Yes. I can't wait to see uh, Toy Story Land. Here's the thing. We've always heard these rumors about the past few years, and it's starting to become the case. They're spending billions of dollars just on one land. Yeah, I mean... Because they look, have to. Look, I mean, look at Universal with Wizarding World. They spend and over how much they don't spend. You don't spend. If you don't spend billion dollars on lands, you have rides like... Or you have stuff like Bugs Land. And but, look how successful that is. It's not. Exactly. Allow me the point what Universal has done with ease. Hogsmeade. Do you want to know how much that was? I want to actually you guys to guess. What did you think it was because of a high quality like that? Would you think it was a billion dollars? No. Hold on it was 400. Second. Hold on a second. It was about 400 million. Yeah, and that actually, was... No, 350. And Diagon, it was about 400. Kong, about 110. Actually, uh... Actually, Wizarding World in, in Hollywood cost about $500 million. Thank you. That's actually counting all the infrastructure work they'd have to do. They had to do a lot of work because that park needed it. So that's included. Now, let's look at... I'm talking about Orlando. I'm not, I'm not talking about Hollywood. What? Hogsmeade, 350. Diagon, 400. Kong, 110. And that has actually been said by multiple individuals. And? You, you know, you, go ahead. Go ahead. The point is, you can do something amazing even with a small budget. And if you honestly think that they can't. Look at Six Flags. They did something really cheap, yet it was something rather amazing. The Justice League Battle from the Joke this. Like, oh. you should... I want fish. Finish. Um, I want fish, and then you can go. Go ahead. May, may I say No, 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 no. We'll, we'll let Alex no. know, because I got this. Go ahead, Alex. No, actually, I want to fucking hear you. No. Because... 
Um, may may I just are... say something real quick, if if I may? That's perfectly fine. Okay. So. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this question, and I want a simple answer, and then I'm gonna continue with what I'm gonna say. How much money did Universal put into Volcano Bay? That is right now uncertain. Okay, so we talk about theme parks putting so much money into theme in the lands. My question is this: How much freaking money is Universal Orlando gonna put in to the um, major, still rumored fourth gate? They've got to put in over a billion dollars if they're gonna build a new park with already planned lands. They are not going to do a one separate land under construction each time. They're going to build. They're going to put all their money into this fourth gate. So you got to look at how much money they're going to put into over a billion. I say I know I'm over exaggerating the number, but they're going to at least put over one billion dollars into this fourth gate. And so I do not disagree. They, there. They're going to put in all their I time and money you. into this gate. Because if you look, now yes, we talked about this earlier before the podcast. If we get that fourth gate, we might see attractions return like Jaws, like maybe Twister, Waterworld. Hell, we might even get some attractions from the past, maybe like an old Ghostbusters meet and greet back. So people need to quit getting pissed off about Universal taking away these their favorite rides growing up like Jaws, like Twister, like all these rides. It is going to be coming back to this fourth gate. Hell, we might even see the Wild 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 West stunt show come back. Hell, if E.T. If e. goes, so what? We will see it back in that damn fourth gate. So people need to quit getting their panties in a damn wad. We're seeing all these old attractions come back to this fourth gate if it ever opens. And that's actually think you have a valid point. There is something with universe. There is something that we should all keep in mind. We just need to wait. I still haven't gotten to say what I wanted to say, but KK. All I'll say is this, and I'll say nothing else. Look at what they can do with small budgets. Because if you think that they need to look at other parks, see what they've done with small budgets outside of Universal and Disney, what they've done. Because I can tell you with absolute certainty. There are multiple examples I can strongly give out that are cheaper than anything Disney or Universal has ever done. And it's been with high degrees of success. So you tell me when we start hearing whatever Avatar, Star Wars, or Volcano Bay and Fast and Furious and Nintendo will bring how do we compare them to what other theme parks have done with more degrees of success with a cheaper budget because i can tell you with absolute certainty is that these theme park like the entire amusement industry will catch on to whatever happens and that they will use it to do something that is unique and original sure you may not see it now you will see it eventually. May it be expensive? Sure. I mean, these days, may it go cheap? Yes. But we always have to keep an open mind. And although I have praised Universal every time and time again, it's admit Universal has its problems. And so does Disney. For an amusement park in the industry, no one's perfect and no one will be. It's just the way we have to look at it. May I go? Yes, you may go. Yes. And then when you're done, I would like to add one more thing. Awesome. So, 
Starting with the first expansion that was announced for, I guess, the Orlando area. With Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. Yes, it was $250 million. But yes, there were already two pre-existing attractions there. That they didn't do anything to but add a new track to one of them. And a new train to two of them. Actually, I don't even think Dueling or Dragon Challenge got new trains. And they rethemed queues. And they added stuff. They added a big castle that literally just has a ride inside of it. Actually, the ride's inside of a show building. They just added a facade of a castle. That's about it. And they added a bunch of small shops that look big, but they're not. Mm -hmm. That's why it's $250 million. And plus, too, I mean, I guess you could say they saved a little bit of money by using parts of the Jaws ride boats, if that, if you can count that. Moving on to Diagon Alley, which is the next one, I believe. I believe that's the next one. Diagon's $400 million because they literally had to level that land that Jaws was on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Put yeah. all the cobblestone in. Yes, they built everything, but again, from scratch. From, yes, from scratch, but once you go above that first floor, it's nothing but wood. There's nothing. There's nothing up there. There might be a little bit of storage. That's it. But there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Besides that first shop, that first floor shop that you see, there's nothing. And then they built Green Guts, which is in a soundstage. Yeah. That's why it's four hundred million. And Hogwarts. I already talked about Hogwarts. You didn't talk about it. You talked about Green Guts. I already talked about Hogsmeade. No, Hogwarts Express. Hogwarts Express. That didn't cost much at all. <laughs> but yet it was a part of the Diagon Alley expansion. It was an entirely brand new system that expanded both. Okay, two. they put it they put a track down and they put a train in that had screens in it. That's all okay. I'll give them that. That's new. You're missing my point. No, you're missing my point. Universal's using nothing but sound stages to create magic. Disney is literally creating new worlds and having new environments. Let me finish. And having new environments that people have never seen before, aka a, a bioluminescent forest that reacts to your feet. A land that brings you to the size of a toy and makes you feel like you're a kid again. Yep. And then takes you to a brand new planet that you've never seen before with new attractions and new meet and greets and more that we don't even know. Allow me to turn the tables. No, because I'm if not done. Looking, and I didn't interrupt you okay. at all while you were talking. So, in <laughs> California, they have Cars Land. And Cars Land literally puts you inside the movie Cars, which everyone loved. Yep. Because it was a hometown story, and it made you feel for the character. And whenever I personally walked into Cars Land, I was like, wow, I don't care how much this costs. This looked amazing. It, it really does. And going back to ticket prices, I don't, I'm not mad about ticket prices. I'm really not. It might seem like I was, but I'm not. Because they're building these new experiences that I'm going to pay this amount of money to see because it's something that I want to see. They're building, they've been building a new world inside of Animal Kingdom for the past four years. Yes, it's taken them four years to do it. But guess what? Who cares? It didn't take them a year to build an attraction that's going to break down 80% of the time that I'm there visiting and I didn't get to write it. Yes, I'm talking about Forbidden Journey. On my first trip to Orlando since Forbidden Journey opened, it was down 80% of the day. That's rushing. Not escape, not escape from Green Gods wasn't down? Luckily, that was a couple years after Escape from Green Gods opened. So it, was, oh, okay. it only broke down once or twice. 
Oh, okay. Kong right. broke down all the time. I rode Kong five times while I was in Orlando in June. And yes, it was during soft openings, but it also broke down twice. And I know of a lot of people that went during its opening, I guess, six months, and it broke down a lot. I see the same thing happening with Fallon. I see the same thing happening with Fast and Furious. Simpsons did the same thing whenever it opened. Um, I'm, and Men in Black did it a lot. Or not Men in Black, Transformers did it a lot, too. It's because these screws have a certain time frame, and if they don't line up, they shut down, and they say, bye, I'm done, drop the mic. No, I'm not doing this anymore. Reset me. Disney, oh, and Disney has rides, for example, like Mickey's Fill Our Magic, that run on a loop. That's fine. But Disney has immersive rides, for example, like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which is new, which is a roller coaster. But they have actual audio animatronics in there that bring you closer to the action, not put a screen in front of you. If I wanted to ride something with a screen, I would buy a VR headset and I would ride it at my home. And I just wouldn't go. I know I wouldn't get the same effect, but I can put uh, fans up and get the same effect and sit in the rolly chair. <laughs> it's exactly what I can do. I, I would do that too. <laughs> and whenever you say that smaller parks need to, or uh, like parks like Universal and Disney need to take what smaller parks are doing, yeah. Battle for Metropolis looks great, but it's one ride. If you look at the other attractions that rides are putting in, like or attract parks are putting in, like Six Flags. If we're talking about smaller parks, nothing is being compared right now to Cedar Fair. Cedar Fair is making amazing attractions. For example, Mystic Timbers. We don't know what's in the shed at all. They've kept it under wraps. We don't know what it is, and it's going to be amazing what it is, whatever it is, because it's a surprise. Um, if you look at the first big coaster that ever came out of this whole, like, resurgence of Cedar Fair whenever they were bought out was Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Yeah, not a lot of people go to King's Dominion, but that's still, like, on the top 20 list of theme park roller coasters. Although, in the world. Then you have I Fury was... 325 that won every freaking award for Golden Ticket last year. Carowinds almost winning Best Park, but a Best Park in Germany won it for no reason whatsoever. Cedar Point is getting an RMC redo of Mean Street that's going to be 200 feet tall. And these rides aren't costing $250 million, yes. But they're still costing a lot of money. And the reason why they can do these is because smaller parks, they have smaller amounts of space to use. The reason why Disney's spending possibly a billion dollars on Avatar is because they can. If Cedar Fair had the infrastructure that Disney had or Universal had, then these we the entire country would be filled with theme parks. Because... Personally, I don't believe that Bob, or I believe, sorry, Bob, but you're probably doing this. They're delegating money to different organizations. Pixar, which is an accusation of Disney, could be making $14 billion, and they could say, oh, we're going to take $10 billion of that dollars. You guys know what you're doing. We're going to take $10 billion, and we're going to put that into the theme parks so we can make our theme parks good. That's what the government does. And that's what Disney and Universal are doing to make their theme parks better. That's what they weren't doing whenever they were taking money away from Walt Disney Animation Studios to pump into the theme parks. And that's why Walt Disney Animation Studios started lacking. And then whenever they said, oh, we're lacking so bad, no one's seeing our movies, we're going to push it back in and take from the parks, build a park in Shanghai for no reason, and then we're going to push it into the movies, make Frozen, Big Hero 6, and Zootopia, and make a buttload of money, bring that back in, and put it into the parks. And if I'm not mistaken, Box Office Mojo just said earlier that... Give me a second. Box Office Mojo said that if we go by what Buena Vista has made, Star Wars Force Awakens made $2 billion, uh, Marvel's The Avenger made a billion five, Age of Ultron made a billion five, 
Um, Frozen made a billion two. Iron Man two or Iron Man three made a billion two. Captain America: Civil War made a billion one. Um, Toy Story three made a billion. Dead Man's Chest made a billion. Rogue One still making money and making a billion. Stranger Tides made a billion. Uh, Finding Dory made a billion. Alice in Wonderland made a billion. Zootopia. All those movies in the past couple of years are being pulled into the theme parks and building better lands. That's what Disney is doing, and that's why they're doing that. Universal doesn't do that. They put it back into their movies. Or sometimes they could take it out and build <coughs> Universal Beijing. Or more expansions to Potter. Or a fourth gate in Orlando. Whatever they need be, they will take out. But the reason why Universal is using less to create, in my opinion, less, is because they're just taking it from the park's money. They're not taking it from corporate. Yeah. I rest my case. Allow me to bring something back up. Because you're talking, and I'm just going to drop it after this. Budgets. Now, you didn't bring mention about Disney's budgets for New Fantasyland, for Avatar, for Toy Story, for Star Wars, all those that have been rumored and some have been confirmed, for Cars Land. Cars Land nearly costed the entirety of the Disney California Adventure expansion. And Cars Land's main e ticket attraction, Raider Springs Racers, costed about $500 million, at least as much as has been rumored. Why? Because it was a very advanced ride system that had to be used for an extremely long trek. Now, look at New Fantasyland. That reportedly cost about a billion because they had inflated budgets. Now, look at My Magic. That's been a problem, and it's been the red haired stepchild of the Walt Disney Company. And like it or not, it's costed over a billion dollars, and they haven't had the ability to expand to other parks because whenever they try to, the other parks try to turn it down. The only one that's starting to turn about that is Disneyland. Even Shanghai Disneyland didn't even use yeah, Fast Pass Plus. Even they. So now well, let's look at Avatar. It's been rumored over the past few years and it's been in development for over seven. And now it's gone over a billion dollars. Now, while I would admit Avatar would have potential, it has had some very rocky pass and is gone some controversy with some of its story and some of its characters so who's to say that maybe possible that it could actually fail it's very probable and it would actually make a lot of sense now let's look at toy story land the rumor budget for it by multiple individuals that are high have been saying that it'd be over 350. for two carnival rides and a sleeky dog roller coaster and an area with low level theming. And now let's look like Star Wars Land, which has been confirmed by Bob Iger himself. $1 billion for each land. So, all that said, including Shanghai Disneyland, which has been reportedly overblown in its budget as well, you're dealing with a large amount of debt within the Walt Disney Company due to the parks and resorts not able to recoup some of its revenue. And as much as I hate to say it, and I do love the Disney parks, there is a valid case to be made. They overblowed their budgets. This is a valid thing that has always been brought to attention by many individuals. And will it backfire? It will. Eventually, it will. Whether we like it or not, they will have to pay for the bloated budgets. And they work like the government, as you said, and working like the government, it brings a lot of issues. Working with the government, like working like the government, can bring a very, very problematic development cycle. And with that, it would bring higher budgets. Now, let's look at what Universal's done. Now, and so yes, you did bring up the Diagon Alley, Hogsmeade, both costed under 500. Now, Skull Island, that costed reportedly from some individuals about 110. Uh, Fast and Furious in Hollywood, it costed about, I think, 125. 
And it's probably going to be the same for Orlando. Fallon's probably for cheaper because it's a very, it's basically like a Simpsons in a way, or it's people meet where they had to replace the right system in a sense and expand upon what they had to do. But it's going to be cheaper because they had to go within a certain reliable model that would be able to not withstand the damages. And I will agree that they have had issues with screens and they, and they will take it customs to that it will hurt them in the ass eventually and i will say that so let's look at super nintendo world it was rumored at march 6 2016 from ign that the area would cost about 351 million so double that with japan orlando and hollywood you have about a billion dollar for all the lands that's still less than what Star Wars Land costs for both. All I'm saying is that there has to be a point where we look at budgets. And there will come a point where we have to look at what will work and what will not. Well, Disney Company, you brought up very well. The film profits have been rising, and many films have been going very expectantly. Hell, some of their films become some of the most popular in the Disney Library, Zootopia, Big Hero 6, Record Ralph, Frozen, and their live action efforts have been ever so growing, with Beauty and the Beast reportedly getting a very large opening weekend possibility, and also The Jungle Book being a very big hot seller last year, which I believe even earned a billion dollars. And also that they have multiple films in the pipeline from both Disney and Pixar. Cars Land, which was based off of Cars, which, yes, did have a good enough popularity, although it did have a problematic issue with Cars 2, which then dipped in terms of the quality, and then they had Planes, and then it's like a spin-off films. And then Marvel, which has been doing extremely well, has earned over $5 plus billion dollars in the box office due to their major successes within building upon a already pre-existing film library, and that they have done it with extremely well in response, which is kind of surprising considering the odds. And what I'm curious about within the next few years is how will the films differ from the theme parks in terms of how revenue goes? Because the films are becoming more and more popular, becoming more and more profitable. So would it be possible that they can, maybe if Avatar doesn't work the way, if Star Wars doesn't work the way, if Toy Story does, could they possibly be starting to distance themselves from the theme parks? Which has actually been something that's been highly debated. Hell, the Walt Disney Company has been highly debated. We sold off for years. And it was almost sold to Comcast in 2004, which is kind of ironic given the odds of the situation. So what I'm going to say left is you can't just say out of one personal look. You have to look at it from different points of views, and you have to see it from different perspectives. Yes, what I'm saying is crazy, but you need to trust in Universal. Yes, their screen fatigue is going to get them into trouble, and it will. I will not deny that, and I will never deny that. As an individual that does love Universal, I had enough screens. And with Disney, they're going to go in the screen direction. Why? Because right now, they are bloating their budgets. They have to. And they have to find ways to cheapen their budgets. Toy Story Land has already minimalized its theming, and yet it's still going to cost over hundreds of millions of dollars. You know why? Bloating the budgets. Delaying time. Universal has kept time very short, has kept very much a persistent schedule. Now, I will always say that they have their faults, and their faults really do shine when it becomes shit. But it always will rely on what will happen when you look at it from different views. You may think of it wrong as one way, but when you look at it from others, it may perceive to be something else. Fast and Furious. It's going to be basically what Hollywood is. Am I happy for it? No. Will it be capacity filler? Yes. 
is exactly what Transformers is, and it's exactly what it will be. Transformers, at its core, was Spider-Man, and with the elevators. It allowed a very much high capacity ratio, which helped benefit Universal's Orlando Resort when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley opened, and so did Springfield, which was a low budget. It was very much strategic ways for them to bring people away from Diagon. And as we talked about earlier on the show, we need to find ways to see how they can look in any form of the industry, Disney, Universal, wherever. How they can divert people away from the big shiny thing. And they, and I'm very curious to see how Disney handles Toy Story Land. I'm very curious to see how Disney handles Star Wars Land. Could they add something that's insanely cheap but really good? Maybe. And I have hope that they can hopefully get that lesson into them. But right now, I just see Disney very much as a spoiled brat. And that they're going to get as much money as they can, and it's not going to end well. <sighs> well, oh, I was going to say this. Back to uh, land expansion. Um, so when we were talking about expansion lands like Nintendo and all this, for those of you who are listening or uh, who are fans of Nintendo, yes, there are some people out there that are excited about Nintendo Land coming to Universal. Here's the thing. I'm not looking forward to it. I, you know, for those of you who are going to be, I don't care if you get pissed at me, you can go, uh, you can go piss off and go cry to your pillow after I say this. I do believe that Nintendo Land is going to flop. It, it probably will and, be a waste of money. It is a waste of money because E.T. is still a popular attraction to this day, and it is going to be a but, huge flop. Travis, I know, Will, what about other attractions that will be going away for Super Nintendo? What about them? Uh, the last time I ever saw a, a Barney show was like when I was like three years old. So I can... I when can, I was Nintendo... Is something else you're dealing with a like someone and i kind of agree with an individual that i have respected for a long while is star wars re like is nintendo not going to work well or is going to work well because you're dealing with a very different market that's Look, that's just my opinion it's going to flop it's a waste of money and i would agree if it wasn't for the fact on it really has to depend on their successes of not only the switch from nintendo but other various markets that nintendo is going to seek in the future they can very well bring nintendo in as a household name and very well as someone with a very unique perspective yes it's many people will be disappointed if et closes but in all reality it may be for the best in all reality, you may see something amazingly beautiful out of it. Or you may see the living nightmares. Either way, you have to wait and see. But all I have to say about Nintendo is that you have to keep something in mind. This probably may not be marketed to you. This is going to be marketed for kids. This is going to be marketed for families. This is going to be marketed for a very different crowd. Different than Diagon, different than Hogsmeade, different than Marvel, even. This is an IP that you may not enjoy, but there have been thousands, no, millions of people that have grown up with the Boy Plumber, or with Donkey Kong, or with Zelda, or with any of those characters from Nintendo's library, and that they will at least know something out of Nintendo and gain some interest. May it be the biggest thing on Earth? No. Is Star Wars the biggest thing on Earth? No. Is Avatar? No. Nothing's the biggest. And it will be. You have to wait and see. Because at the end of the day, good attractions and good merchandise and good beverages, good experiences and good things overall will always determine the best outcome. Diagon Alley in particular also built upon this with the addition of wands. This was something that on not only... <clears throat> 
sorry, not only changed the game in interactive entertainment, but now Disney is looking to possibly stake into that too with Star Wars and potentially with the Jedi's. Yeah, but... and you have to wait. Nintendo's a very different beast than Diagon, than Hogsby, than anything else they've ever done. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, but see, Alex, you're saying a lot by saying Star Wars is not popular. It is popular. Oh, no, I'm not discrediting it. But it's not the biggest IP of all time. Neither is Nintendo, and neither is everything in the industry. You have to look at it from different angles. Everything is viewed from different opinions and different perspectives. Yes, my different opinion may be different from yours and from Travis's and from everyone in the Coaster Caster's crew. But it's always within those opinions that helps stem more talking, more selling of something in a good or bad way. And who else wonders why The Room is one of the most popular films? Regardless if it's bad, it's been very popular because of its mixed reception. So how exactly will Nintendo differ from everything in that? That I have to wait and see. But Universal and Disney are going to have to work against each other and for each other in many ways that will help shape the Orlando industry and the entire global industry in tourism and amusement commerce. And yes, what I've said in this past episode may be the craziest stuff I've ever said, but you have to wait. It's what I've always said about Fast and Furious because it's a 360 attraction. It's what I've always said about multiple things from Disney because it's very much something you have to see in person. Yes, everything that I say here is my own opinion and it can always be conflicting, but it's not what everything in the theme park community is. We all have our different opinions and we all have our different mindsets. Yes, one will be different, but hey, maybe that's a good way because we can celebrate each other's very well strong suits. And yes, this was a very, like, this was something that I love talking to you guys about because it's very much something that sparked debate. This is stuff that sparks debate within everything. And shouldn't that be what we do as coaster casters? Spark debates and see what we like and don't like? see what our opinions change and differ. At the end of the day, I'm very interested to see how people react to this episode because it's a very interesting subject that we talked about. How will people look at a certain angle? That I'm very curious about. And yes, I'm expecting a lot of hell to come with me after this episode. But it's my opinion, and everything that I say here is my honest and personal truth. And I will withstand everything to make sure I keep to that truth. It may differ, yes, but I will always stay the same. All right, well, I'm going to say, while you were talking, Alex, and I was listening, um, I was also looking up... Um, some cost from uh, the past, shall we? Um, first thing you talk about Nintendo costing how much did you say? Three hundred and fifty-one million. Uh, I checked at IGN. It looked like from some individuals on IGN and otherwise, uh, it was about three hundred and fifty-one. Although that may have changed. Okay. Well, um, first thing you can't. Unless it's announced by an official through a park, you can't really like um, say that that's the and thing that's, because it's a rumor, and you okay, can't really base opinion. You can't really base opinions off of rumors. Just saying. Um, second, um, in this day and age, if Epcot was built, it would take no ten can. years to build it. And it would be two million dollars. I have more. Million, by the way. If Disneyland was built in this time period, it would and, and let's and let's just say because there's no actual like cost that was sent out from Walt back in fifty five about how much Disneyland cost. 
Let's just say if it costs a million dollars. In this day and age, it would take seven years to build um, Disneyland. And it would take $9 million to build it. But if it was $500 million, it would take uh, still the seven years. It would only take $4 million. Magic okay. Kingdom. Disneyland's or Disney World's Magic Kingdom would take 20 years to build and $2 billion. I'm not saying that Disney is not wrong or not in the wrong here. They are. They they need to figure out something to bring down their costs. Yes, but that will not happen. They no, will not steer away from what Walt envisioned. And, and that's a place to where kids can go to relive their fantasies, their dreams, and the past, and the future. And I agree. But that doesn't mean you can't limit the money that's being poured into it. That's cutting corners. And that's what Universal is going to do with Nintendo. They're going to, and I'm using this word, and I'm not trying to be funny because I, this is a very serious matter right now. And I don't want to cuss. They're going to literally poop all over the Nintendo property, I believe. They are going to turn it into a screen-based attraction. Yes, it could be very innovative, just like Hog or not Hogwarts was. Um, Green Gods was. Forbidden Journey. Green Gods was very innovative. So it was Forbidden Journey with the cuckoo arm. But in the end of the day, they are screen-based attractions. There are some so sets in there. Elements. There's some sets in there. But there's not, not much. Well, let me there's ask not much this. at all. If you look at for uh, Ariel's, if you if you look at Ariel's undersea adventure, or un, under the sea, uh, Ariel's whatever it's called in New Fantasyland, that's all animatronics. There's maybe one tiny screen in there. Whenever you're going into the water and she's doing the whole da 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 da, da that thing, yeah, um, that's the screen. Although oh, wow. that was also made during the time of Disney California's adventure expansion Ex that was built alongside exactly. that. Exactly. And that was cutting half the development costs. But if you because that was already but if you that was already built. But if you look at this, um if you look at what Disney California Adventure was and what it is now, look how much more people are going to Disney's California Adventure. Because they added Cars and Land would, and they're add they added Tower of Terror and they're adding so much to that park, they're making it. They're I'm I'm sorry to bring politics into it, but I have to. They're making it great again, and that's the what thing. they're attempting to do with the other parks. Would Animal, you say Animal Kingdom was not a full day park? Everyone can agree with this. Animal Kingdom was a half day park. Now it is turning into a full day park with Avatar, and Rivers yes. of Light, and the Tree of Life show. I am not finished. Hollywood Studios is nowhere close to a full day park right now. You could probably spend a full day in there, but you'll be really bored and seeing a lot of shows. Um, with the expansion of Toy Story Land, with the expansion of Star Wars, with a possible redo of Rock and Roller Coaster, and possibly a revamp of Great Movie Ride. And maybe... The bringing over of Indiana Jones Adventure from Disneyland. That will make that park great for about 30 years. Maybe more. Maybe a lot more. Maybe 50 years. Epcot. Walt Disney. I'm not done. Epcot, I believe, is a, is going through its maturing phase of it's going from being 20 to 21. I say this because I'm going 20 to 21 soon. Um, it's going to where it's like, oh, we're going to do this all the time. Food and wine. And they're like, wow, this is very successful. Brings a lot of people to our park. Even though if we don't have anything going on, we're a half day park. Well, maybe we should do more festivals throughout the time. 
arts festival, flower and garden, they're probably going to add a fourth festival. If they have festivals going on all the time in that park, it's going to bring more people. And with run Disney events and with the revitalization of, down, of Disney Springs or downtown Disney to Disney Springs, it's going off without a hitch besides Planet Hollywood, which we'll get to some other time because we're running out of time because we're almost going on three hours. But all I'm going to say is in the long run, Disney is going to benefit from this and Universal is going to crash because one day Disney's going to be like, oh, we have all of these animatronics and all of this to show for. And what does Universal have to show for now? Besides let me, it's ET, they only have let screens. Me, let me ask you this. Are you including Pirates of Shanghai into this? Because that's, that is a no, landmark. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about Orlando area and California. I'm talking, I'm talking about the United States. I'm talking and, that's a landmark attraction that will be a driving force into one of Star Wars Land's big attractions. And that I, is a primary screen-based attraction. I understand that. And Flight, Flight of Passage is a screen-based attraction, too. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be screen-based parts in uh, Navi River Journey, too. But here's the point. There are audio animatronics in some rides. For example, there's going to be audio animatronics inside the Navi River Journey. There are... there. There is freaking audio animatronics all over the place. There's a Davy Jones audio animatronic inside Battle for the Sunken Treasure. If you look inside of Gringotts, you go out, and I'm going to spoil the entire ride for everybody. You go out. You go to your first part. There's a screen. You move over. There's a screen. You move over. There's a screen. You spin around. There's a screen. And then you go into the three quotes 360 room. And there's a screen, and you're done. Forbidden Journey, you go. Screen, there's a little set. Screen, there's a little set. Screen, there's the Whomping Willow. Screen, screen, Dementor, screen, screen, end. Transformers, screen, 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 elevator, screen, 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 screen. Spider-Man, screen, screen, screen. Fire, screen, screen, screen. Exactly. Screens get bored. And here's the thing. And I want, I'm not dissing you. And I'm not. But what if Disney ever goes down the path of going strictly, and I'm going to say this, goes and stays within screen-based attractions for a continuous period of time? They will not. What if? Would, and if they would, what would your opinion then be? They will not. Would your opinion then change? No, it would no, not. I'm asking. I'm asking if. If, if they went down that path, what would your opinion be then? It would be the same opinion as Universal, because I think I and think screen I think screens same. are not innovative enough to get your point across. I think they're cool for about five seconds, and they add an effect. But I don't praise them. The only reason why I will praise Escape from Green Gods is because of the initial drop. The initial drop is very cool. And it's something and you, about the and, and it's something and it's something you very don't you really don't see in America. You really don't see that anywhere. And what about the sequence where there's a cuckoo arm that takes out one of the screens and launches the car? You can't see that personally because you're on the ride. It's not that's still something innovative and something unique. But it's still a screen. And, I'm not, and I'm not saying Green Gods. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be the number one attraction. It's it Will. Uh, may I just add this one quick thing? I promise. Yeah, I promise. It, if it's stupid to y'all, that's fine. I mean, it's Travis, fine. Any opinion, it's good. Go ahead. Travis, you you bring up the initial launch on Escape from Green Gods. Yes, you don't see that anywhere else in America. But I mean, what, oh God, I, it's probably going to sound idiotic for me saying this, but what about the launch on the mummy? That's a screen, and then you get the launch, or is that 
or is that like something completely different from Escape it's, from Green Gods? It's, it's it's completely different. Are you talking about like the Foxfire? No, it's, the scene where the uh, your mummy souls says, will be mine for all souls. eternity. And yeah, then, like that's not that's not a screen. Oh, they put not... fog and they project something. Oh, it's the animal. That's tribe. that's why that's that's why whenever you shoot out, fog comes behind you. Like fog fills you. Oh. That's 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 what you're going into. Because if they put a screen there, you'd be like, "Oh, I hit the screen every time." Yeah, they can't do that. It's it's a fog you're effect. Referring to the turnabout sequence before the launch, the first launch. No, so Orlando's works where you go out, you go into that first room where he'll be like, "The curse is real." Blah blah blah. And that's like that's Reggie. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Reggie. And then you go into the room where you look up and confrontations there. You go down. There's a there is a screen there, and I think that screen is so gimmickly stupid. It's dumb. The and then bugs? you do, and then you go to the bugs, which the bugs don't do anything for me. You go backwards. They turn you. And then there's the turn back. And then you turn, and then you do something else. I can't remember. And then you go up the big chute, and then you do the roller coaster. And then they do the false finish, and then they shoot you out again, and then you're done. Because what I was thinking, were Will, were you talking about like the turnabout after the backwards drop where overhead there's a screen that projects an image as uh, it turns? It, or the last are you referring to no, the he's, he's he's referring to the the shoot before you get into the roller coaster portion. Yeah, the where launch. that's um, completely practical. That's where the full no screen. screen. Yeah, that's no screen. There's no screen. Okay, all right. Yeah, I just one of those. Okay. That that I will be honest, Universal. That is impressive. I like that. Yes, it, it is that's, very that's impressive. That's very cool. And yes, even though I won't ride Mummy 50 times in a day, that's ridiculous. Oh, come on. I almost had to. But it's the rides do get old. And I'm not saying that every ride doesn't get old. But I feel like when it comes to going to Disney or going to Universal, I feel like I spend my time rewriting Disney rides more than rewriting Universal rides. Because I'll rewrite Seven Doors Mine Train if I could. I want to put that disclaimer out. If I could, about 10 times. Because it's so fun. I, I very much enjoy riding Seven Doors Mine Train because it's innovative. It has the wagons that tilt and you can actually make them tilt and physically like feel like you're flipping your car over. Trust me, I tried. It's very Although fun. they have somewhat newer that a little bit too. Not as much Not as, as you think. It really only takes effect on the back though. That's why on the front that's, that's where I sit. I sit in the back. That's why I flip myself all the time. It's really fun. And while I will agree that Universal does get old with the screens, there are parts, there are certain rides that I actually do go back on and on again because I do rather enjoy them for what they are, regardless of their screen or not. I, so, it's always just, it's a matter of personal preference, Travis. I know it is, but it also, so, this whole conversation is a matter of personal preference because I believe that Disney, even though they're spending more money, they're making better attractions. And you're believing that exactly. Universal spending less money is making better attractions, but will hurt them in the long run. Correct? Yes. So are you okay? So are you guys saying that, that made my point <clears throat> exactly? So <laughs> Jimmy Fallon's going to be a scream, right? So are people going to start saying that Jimmy Fallon's going to be a flop? I think I think either Jimmy Fallon and Fast and Furious will be. Where screen starts and furious to turn screen. on Universal. See, and I'm, I'm fast really fast. hoping it's Fast and Furious. Jimmy Fallon. It's going to be Fast and Furious. And I'm gonna laugh. Furious. Fallon has the Fallon has the advantage of the Tonight Show. It can be easily changed. Usually, it is. and Fallon also has the virtual queue going for itself. And yeah, then that's, so I, it's not like you have to go on that ride, and if you have to, it's like you can just wait and do other fun things. Yeah, you literally just have your return ticket or whatever they're going to use, and then you can go ride like Green God, so you can go ride Mummy, or you can go ride Despicable Me if you can get, I guess they're going to do return time for that. Um, 
and then you come back at your return time for Fallon and you ride Fallon. And then it's like what? they're probably what they're probably going to do is going they're going to distribute what they look like for when you get tickets to actually go see the Tonight Show. That's that would be genius. I don't Except want it. I don't want it. I don't want it on a stupid magic band type thing. I don't want it like no. I want an actual physical ticket that looks like an actual ticket to go see the Tonight Show in New York. I want it to look just and like then, that. When they tested Despicable Me, they had two options. One was a regular ticket, and one was doing it digitally off phones. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised that if you don't get a ticket, you will do it by phone, yes. and you just have to show it to them immediately. Jimmy Fallon will be innovative for the virtual ride queue of the future, which is what exactly. you and it will also be, be. Jimmy Fallon is. It will also be unlike. Um, it also. For universal standards, it'll also be a first in terms of right technology. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll just say about that. So it has a lot going for it. Fa Fast and Furious, as much as I am giving out hope, as I like do think it may get some updates to actually address the screen fatigue, it's not going to be good. Fast and Furious yeah, yeah. is going, uh, Fast and Furious is going to be when Universal figures out that they messed up and just put all of their money into screen-based attractions. And they're going to and attempt, they're going to attempt to use the money that they've built off of all this infrastructure with Potter and Kong and Fallon and all of that stuff. They're going to pile all their money together, put all their eggs in one basket in the fourth park, and they're going to try and bring back audio animatronics again. And it'll work, but it's not going to work as well as Disney continuing their audio animatronics program. There is one mind though. Back in the early, like, 2016, it was originally rumored of Secret Life of Pets, which would have been a trackless dark exactly. ride, similar to Pooh's Honey Hunt. So they are responding. They are. And it's not like they aren't. And I'd be really curious to see how Nintendo does, because that can go either Nintendo way. Nintendo will not have any audio animatronics. I think you have to believe, because you are, you're playing the game at home. You have to experience it in real life. Yes, you are. And they are going with to, screens. And they're going to figure out ways that isn't technically screens, but it's going to be something else. And I'm not going to talk about it just yet, but it's going to be quite interesting. I mean, if you guys can keep track of my media, there is something that they could be working on. Okay. I, know what, I know what they're working on. And to me, that's the it's it's not VR. It's innovative and it's very cool. No, I know, I know it's not, not I know it's not VR. VR. I know. I know what they're planning. I know what the rumor you're is. You're going to see a lot of practical scenes, but you're going to see something of a screen in Mario Kart, and I'm not going to say how. I know what it's going to be, Alex. I've seen all the stuff for it. I keep up okay. with all this stuff. I just don't, I life. think, I think that that's going to backfire in Universal. I still do. Right. And may I add something? Yes. Okay. Two things. One, Jimmy Fallon. I am looking forward to it more than Fast and Furious because from um, – I think Jimmy Fallon is going to be similar to Soren. So, in a way. Yeah, in a way. And then, yes, I do love the Fast and Furious films. I love uh, – except Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift kind of – bombed but all the fast and furious films are fantastic but a ride it like travis said it will blow up in their face and they're gonna soon realize that with the mistakes they're make that they made they're gonna be like oh my god we should have never gotten rid now i'm going to be wrong for saying this but again my opinion is my opinion the universal is going to sit there back in their uh, seats and say why in the world did we get rid of Disaster and Beetlejuice in the first place? Disaster, I will say this. It was a dated ride system. It and was. They tried, it, there was no way they could keep the same ride system. There's no way. I will, I will tell you this. Universal should be kicking their, their self in the butt right now. Because if you look at it, besides Men in Black and Shrek, 4D, and sometimes ET, and everything in Kid Zone, which a lot of adults cannot ride, 
in the shows. All of your attractions are basically e-tickets. And something that will hopefully be amended with Nintendo, they may try to do a D-ticket. If, if, you, if you even do a D-ticket, that's just going to be like... Because it's new. That's why. You're still having 60-minute wait times on Kong. You're still having 60-minute wait times on Forbidden Journey. You're still having 60-minute wait times on Green Gods. You're still having 60-minute wait times on Transformers. That ride's been open for years. It's been open for almost six years. And it's been a capacity filler because of its exactly. popular IP. Universal needs to work on smaller attractions like Kane and Kudos. Oh, my goodness. Make more rides like that. It, which to make, Kudos is fun. To make it to where if there's a ride that someone wants to ride, they could be like, oh, I'm going to come back, ride these rides that are at five minutes, and then – Go wait in the twenty minute line when everyone else is at lunch or something like that. That's my issue with Universal, and that's why, in a minute, I'm it, everything's going to make sense. That's why I'm getting a Universal annual pass because I know, and this is going on to what the whole point of the entirety of this episode was supposed to be. That's why I'm going down in March. Because March is probably the best time to go down because the wait times are very short most of the time. And it's right before Fallon. It's right before Volcano Bay. I won't need to worry about probably many wait times because everyone's waiting on going to Fallon and Volcano Bay and Pandora. It's the perfect time to go. I will say this. Whenever pa- whenever, a- whenever Avatar opens, everything at Disney's – well, not everything, but everything at Animal Kingdom is probably going to go up a good 45 to 60 minutes because there's going to be so many freaking people there. When Volcano Bay opens, everything at that complex is going to be dumb. I bet I can't even find a hotel room for the first two months that Volcano Bay is open, maybe even three. That's probably why people are having trouble finding hotel rooms for Horror Nights. And whenever Fallon opens, Fallon's freaking taping down there. Those freaking Fallon marks that are going down there just to see Fallon are going to be like, oh, let's go ride this while we're waiting in our virtual queue to ride the Jimmy Fallon ride for the 15th time today. I can slowly hear merchandise sales go up. And that's why... That's why Disney lacks in Universal. Because Disney doesn't really put out good merchandise. Universal just makes basically everything with the logo on it and ships. I would say Potter has been kind of the exception. Potter has someone. Potter has been the exception because of the wands, the cloaks, everything that's dealing with the expanded universe. Yes, I understand. I'd say Springfield, I'd say Potter, and I'd probably even say the Tendo when that comes will be the exception. Springfield, no. Springfield, maybe a Lard Lad Donut, maybe some other stuff, but besides that, no, it's all stupid little tchotchkes. That are Simpsons themed. Okay. Those are Fallon They're... themed. There's stuff but that's just... Minion themed. There's stuff that Transformers themed. There's stuff that's Men in Black themed. Everything but themes to kept... what ride it is. But sometimes those are kept in particular areas that shouldn't be. I'm very curious to see how they handle okay. the market. Like, and I'm very happy that you're going to become a pass holder. I am too, because it's because it's kind of interesting to see people starting to like go and do more Orlando theme parks because it's very nice to see the park businesses booming and seeing financially. I'm curious about the return of interest within the next few months for the parks. I'm very curious to see how. You enjoy yourself as a pass holder. The reason why I'm becoming a pass holder, and it's not even a shot of because of all these inflating ticket prices. It's because every single time I go down, which I'm going possibly going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly seven times this year, I'd be paying about $500 a visit. So I'm just saying screw it. Just going to buy annual passes, get merchandise discounts, and be done with it. It's the only reason why I'm buying annual passes. It's the only reason why. 
if this was if if Walt was still alive, which we all know dang sure that he wouldn't be right now, but if he was, or heck, if Roy was even alive, Roy would be, wow, I'm severely disappointed in this company. And I'm talking about Disney. Because I think the, the films are becoming some of the best assets of Disney, though. Like it's what it's not about the past. films, and it's, and it's not about the price gouging of all of the lands and all that stuff. It's because of the tickets. Disney is supposed to be a place that parents can take their kids on that trip that that kid has always wanted because they want to go see what they see on TV. They can't do that when tickets are $200. To add some salt into that, would you say that Disney Vacation Club was a... Disney Vacation Club is a huge flop. I think it should be redone. I think the point system should be redone. And I think that they need to add more DVC resorts around the world. Take Marriott Vacation Club, for example, which me and my mother are owners of Marriott Vacation Club. There are Marriott Vacation Club hotels everywhere. There's some in New York. There's some in D.C., I'm pretty sure. There's some in Hilton Head, South Carolina, which I just got back from. There's six, I believe, in Orlando. Because there's Royal Palms, Sable Palms, Imperial Palms, Cypress Harbor, Lakeshore Reserve, and Grand Vista. I think they're building a seventh. There's so many, uh, there's so many Marriott Vacation Clubs. Plus, with all those vacation clubs, if you buy vacation club points... You can stay at resorts basically for free because you get a free night every year. Plus, you can use your points to stay at those hotels. And it's about 90-something points, which is ridiculous. Disney needs to go into that where if you don't want to stay or cannot stay at a DVC resort, you get one night free at a select Disney resort. That would be genius. That would be an amazing way to sell DVC to people that don't normally buy DVC. You do it on, you do it on a 2000, 4,000, 6,000 point scale, 2000, which gets you the 2000 a year would get you one vacation to Disney a year. And it would be at probably the smallest or the lowest like tiered, the the value resort tiered uh, DVC resort or 4,000, which would get you, two at the value or one at the moderate one year at the moderate one or 6,000 which would get you at the highest level two stays at the moderate or four at the value and if you want to do an 8,000 one you can do two at deluxe six at moderate and eight at value that would be amazing like eight free nights at a value resort I would take that take it to the bank and I would literally stay a week at Disney or just stay eight days at Disney. Like that's, that is what Disney needs to do. Yes. Their point system does an entire trip. I believe. I don't know how their point system works. Actually. I know it's like two, four, six or eight right now. It's really weird and wonky and I, it's stupid, but they need to do it to where if, for some reason, because they don't have many DVC resorts on property in Disney World or, heck, even Disneyland. There's no DVC resorts in Disneyland. <clears throat> there is. There's some rooms, but it's not resorts. There, there needs to be resorts because you have Bay Lake Tower, for goodness sake. That thing holds so many people. It's not even funny. That's an entire DVC resort. Well, let me ask you this. DVC was never created in the first place if it never was and if all those resort hotels expansions were used to allow more guests into the hotels so much for a problem because there's a lot of people that stay off site maybe with the included rooms they can actually have more people on site to be honest um the only time that people stay off property is if they're staying at Universal, which is because Universal is building better and cheaper hotels than Disney, or because or it's because they're staying at um, 
for example, a Marriott Vacation Club, something that they already own. Not a lot of people stay at a comfort <laughs> inn whenever they go, unless you're a tour group. Bad for example, example, I but... stayed. For example, I stayed at a Drury Inn whenever I went for my band trip, and I'm like, wow, I don't want to stay at a Drury Inn ever again. It was horrible. <laughs> Not and many people. Example, not many but, people stay off property unless they're forced to. And I know and it's a bad example, but when I, because I've had to deal with this when it comes to Disney, me and my mother have both decided we're not going to stay on property because it's way too expensive. So what if they start doing hotels that allow for cheaper prices that were of universal quality? That's what the that's what the value resorts were supposed to be, but then they increased prices. That's Disney's fault. And then you know when we're talking about staying on resort, you know, um, I've stayed at this one hotel for fifteen plus years since I was just a little tyke since I was about two years old. This hotel is the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista Resort Hotel at Disney Springs. Which that's, that's technically on property. Well, yeah, but uh, mostly some of the employees I asked, and they said uh, it is on property, but it's not a Disney hotel. It's not a Disney hotel because it's not themed to Disney. It's like it's 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 basically like Disney's Disneyland's Good Neighbor hotels. That's exactly what it is. Yes, because that's like what Mr. we Rogers. that's what. That, that's that's what we stayed at at Disneyland whenever we went. There's like five or six, maybe seven. I think I don't know. There's a lot of good neighbor hotels, and they because they only have three on-site hotels because Disneyland was built in such a small area. That's why, that's why Disneyland has its issues with what it has because they don't have enough rooms and all that stuff. I'm sorry for asking about this, but we have gone over time. I know we have. Would you like to finish what you were talking about? No, I think I know I'm I am good. very sorry. No, I'm good. Um, I, I've got nothing else to say. I mean, whatever I forgot to talk about tonight, I'll just talk about on next week's episode. Awesome. Got it. Yeah. All right, so Alex, where can we find you on social media? Find me on Twitter at Alex Show Prod. That's Alex Show Prod under with no space. You can find me here on YouTube at Alex Show Productions, and you can find me at Amino at Alex Show Productions. Will? Uh, you can find me on social media, uh, both on Twitter and the Instagram mo. At HHN Dog, that's D A W G H H N Dog. I have a YouTube channel. I am most of my videos on my channel are Halloween Horror Nights. Yes, I'm a Halloween Horror Nights updater. So whenever you get new HHN content, I will put out more videos of HHN. Um, uh, yeah, again, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, HHN Dog, D A W G, and uh, yeah, well, I will see you guys in the doghouse. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Travis Coaster. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Coastercasters uh, and on Facebook at Coastercasters. And follow me on Instagram at Travis Coaster. And until next week, um, thank you all for watching. And um, yeah, that's it. We hope you have a very pleasant President's Day weekend. Yes, thank God. I have no school Monday. <laughs>